Please join us as we ask God to give us the spirit of illumination as we read God's word. Eternal God, thank you for this glorious day and this opportunity to, do, to proclaim your word. We pray now, God, that you will speak through the written word as you speak through the spoken word. For God, we acknowledge that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so as your word is read this Sunday morning, that it will not fall on deaf ear, we pray, but it will indeed speak to the man, to the woman, to the boy, to the girl, speak to the person who finds themselves hungry for truth. And God, as your word speaks to us, may we have an open heart and ears to hear. Thank you, God, for what we are about to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, friends, as we continue the Eastertide season, just one week after celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, we invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 21, verse 1 through 14 from a new international version of the word. And knowing that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we invite you to read this word together. John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Let us read. And afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon, Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but his disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciple followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed the board and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, I want us to focus on verse 14 of this pericope for it would serve as the backdrop and the Genesis point of our preaching time. For the Bible says from verse 14 of John chapter 21, this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Friends, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I invite you to pray with me and pray for me as we lift up this text 
and attempt to preach and teach on our subject today, deja vu, all over again. Deja vu all over again. I don't know if you know this person I'm about to describe, but he is a legend in baseball, a baseball legend by the name of Lawrence Peter Barra. Lawrence Peter Barra played 19 seasons in the major leagues and 18 of those 19 seasons, he was an all-star. He, he won 10 World Series championships and was a manager and coach of the New York Mets and the New York Yankees. He had a career batting average of 300, 285 and hit 358 home runs during his career. He is one of only six players to win the most valuable player of the American League Baseball uh, uh, Trophy. And, and in that, uh, in, in 1972, he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He, he served in World War II as a Navy gunner on a fighter's ship. And in, in 2015, President Barack Obama awarded him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom posthumously. He, that, that's the kind of person that, that, that Lawrence was. Now, admittedly, uh, unless you are a sports trivia uh, fan or you are a contestant practicing for Jeopardy, you might not know who Lawrence Peter Barra uh, was. But if you follow baseball, you know him as Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, a native of St. Louis, Missouri, the son of Italian immigrants, Yogi Berra had a tremendous baseball career, but, but for the purpose of our discussion this morning, I, I want to spotlight y'all on another facet of his memory, and, and that is the, if you are a researcher of public speaking in that arena, there's none other more quoted than Yogi Berra. But it's not just Yogi Berra and his baseball talk, but his yogiisms. Yogiisms, what we call it. Yogiism, often a look to form of either of an apparent redundancy or a contradiction. Yogiism, how Yogi Berra would say one thing and you didn't really figure out what he was talking about until it sunk in. Yogiism, again, very often took the form of either an apparent redundancy or a contradiction, but often were uh, giving us an underlying and powerful message that offered not just humor, but wisdom. Yogiisms like 90% of baseball is mental. The other half is physical. The yogi-isms, like it ain't over till it's over. Yogi-isms, like thank you for making this day necessary. Yogi-isms, you can observe a lot by watching. And get this one, a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Y yogi isms, they contradictions. It sometimes didn't make a whole lot of sense, but 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 he said these things, putting words together to make you think. Here's another one: always go to other people's funerals, otherwise they won't go to yours. <laughs> yogi isms. If, if you can't imitate a person, don't copy them. But, but, but now, if you haven't lost me, I, I want you to understand the yogiism to which I lift up today, which is actually the title of the sermon, is Deja Vu All Over Again. Deja Vu All Over Again. And, and I want you to understand, well, first of all, what Deja Vu is. Deja Vu simply is the illusion of remembering scenes and events when experiences first, the, excuse me, when experience for the first time. Deja vu, a feeling that, that, that one has seen or heard something before. Deja vu, something 
overly or unpleasantly familiar. The, the, the sermon today is called Deja Vu over again because I want you to recognize that this was the third time according to, to the book of John that Jesus appeared back to the disciples. It, it was not in the same week of his resurrection. Some scholars say it could have been maybe a month after the resurrection. We're not sure of the exact dating, but, but this is the third time that he has appeared over again. And, and I wonder what were the disciples thinking this time? I, I can imagine they felt a sense of deja vu. Here he is coming again, standing by the seashore of all things. I, I know that they had questions about, is he coming back? They had witnessed his crucifixion. They heard of his resurrection. Uh, John, according to the text, went ahead of Peter and looked, and then Peter came to the tomb, and he wasn't there. So they hadn't seen Jesus in a while. But since his resurrection, the Bible says this was the third occurrence of a deja vu in this final chapter of John. Uh, the Bible describes how Jesus revealed himself again at the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Tiberias. Why was it called the Sea of Tiberias? Well, one of the Roman uh, emperors had a, a had a home on the Sea of Galilee, and since he was the emperor, they renamed the lake the Sea after him. So it's referred to the Sea of Galilee and the Sea of Tiberias. But nevertheless, this was also the Sea of commerce and the sea of, 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 of fishing. P Peter was a fisherman. James and John were fishermen. And if you remember the call of the disciples, how Jesus called these people from fishing and said, come and become fishers of men. Verse 2 of chapter 21 records that Simon realized that since I'm a fisherman and since this ministry thing has hadn't happened since Jesus was crucified and raised again. I think, boys, we need to go fishing again. What are you saying? I, I, you got to realize that these were men. And these men had responsibilities and these responsibilities were to be carried out in a way of, of respect, but also a way of making sure that those placed in their care were taken care of. Let me back it up and say that again. These were men and men were responsible for those placed in their care would be taken care of. And if you are a man, you have to be responsible for those in your care are taken care of. I think I said something. Let me do, do it at one more time. These men were responsible, even though they had a calling on their life of ministry that did not eliminate them from their responsibility. And the Bible says that Peter, recognizing his responsibility, says, boys, let's go fishing. And all of them, seven to be exact, followed him to fish. And as they joined Peter on the Sea of Galilee, the Tiberias Sea, they are now fishing. But now please remember, again, before they were disciples, they were fishermen. They went back to the thing that was comfortable to them, the thing that was familiar to them, and the thing that they could rely on. Don't know who I'm talking to this Sunday morning, but I want you to know that God has already prepared that place not just of comfort but of blessed assurance so that you can feel God's presence when you need it the most. God has already called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light so that you can begin to experience God's joy and God's provisions through God's holy word. Verses 4, 5, and 6 of this text gives us the story of how Jesus is now standing on the shore, but the disciples in the boat didn't recognize him because it was daybreak. Let me say that again. They didn't recognize him because it was daybreak, but that doesn't mean he was not there. Somebody hear what I'm saying this day. Just because you don't see Jesus does not mean Jesus is not there. Just because you don't see God does not mean God does not see you. 
Just because you cannot touch the Holy Spirit does not mean the Holy Spirit is not touching you. The word says at daybreak, Jesus began to see them. That's a good word for somebody. That's an encouraging word for somebody in this pandemic. Just because you can't see your way clear does not mean God does not see you in the midst of whatever you in. Just because you, you are going through a moment of furlough does not mean God has furloughed God's love away from you. You ought to bump somebody and tell them, I feel it now. I, I express him now. I, I love him even more now because I know God has not furloughed or God has not laid me off or God has not put me aside. I can't see it at the minute of daybreak and daybreak only comes y'all after your midnight. But let me get back to the text because it was only daybreak. They couldn't see him. He was some distance away. And the Bible says that's when the miracle began. The miracle, the miracle of this great fishing, fishing expedition, the miracle of transformation, the miracle of how God took these seven disciples on this fishing expedition and found themselves now getting ready to do even greater work for the Lord. De deja vu, deja vu gives me three things that I just want to lay upon you this Sabbath day. Deja vu all over again helps me begin to recognize, realize, and reorganize. Again, recognize, realize, and reorganize. And when I say recognize, realize, and reorganize, I, I want you to believe and hear me that re realize, number one, means is that that is when you realize that God is still in control. The Bible tells us in verse 7, then the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, it that is, said to Peter, it is the Lord. You see, when God speaks to you, my friends, I need you to realize it's God and God alone. When God lays it upon your heart to change from your wicked ways and turn to his love and grace, realize that's not an incident or coincidence. That's God's providence. You didn't tune in today by accident. You didn't tune in today by coincidence. You're here by God's providence. God knew that on April the 19th, 2020, you would be sitting at home or sitting at work or sitting somewhere, not in a sanctuary, to realize his goodness and to realize his joy and to realize his love. You see, when you're at the point of realizing, you will also begin to recognize, but you will recognize as you realize his power. What you're saying, Reverend, I, I want you to recognize that, that, that oftentimes in pandemics like this and oftentimes in challenging experiences like we're having now, if you will recognize an opportunity in the crisis, there is also a champion from what you are going through. Let me back it up and say it like this. Craig Brochel from Life Church says it in every crisis, there is an opportunity. And from the opportunity, you are able to lift up and be a part of what God is doing with those around you. Let me explain it to you by illustrating the quote. The quote is simply this. My mother had fainted in the living room. She had cancer. We were poor, uninsured, and she was not getting any health care. And it is from that point on, I knew what I wanted to do, something to change that situation. Y'all, these are the words of Dr. Marilyn Hughes Gaston. Dr. Marilyn Hughes Gaston, born in 1939 in Cincinnati, Ohio, grew up, y'all, in the projects in a three-room apartment. Again, I didn't say three-bedroom. I said three room apartment. So you get the picture. There's a kitchen. That's one room. There's a bedroom. That's one room. And there's an entry room. That's a third room. A three room apartment comes Dr. Marilyn Hughes Gaston. Dr. Gaston 
after graduating in 1960 from Miami University, matriculated into med school at the City College of Medicine, University of City of, of, of Cincinnati, and was the only African-American woman who graduated in her class, then ventured to Philadelphia General Hospital and began to do a great service there. It was Dr. Gaston, y'all, who remembered what her mother was like on the floor, Dr. Gaston, who recognized in the crisis of not being able to dial a 911 back in the 1940s for her mother, that she could take her God-given talent and do something with it. Don't miss this, y'all. God can say in the midst of a crisis, there is an opportunity. And in Dr. Gaston's life, she had a crisis of her mother suffering with cancer. And as a child, she says, I want to do something about it. She went on using her God-given talent, y'all, and became a phenomenal physician specializing in sickle cell uh, oh, you missed it. Specializing in sickle cell disease. This disease that affects so many African Americans. What you're saying, Reverend, I'm saying from a crisis, she accepted the opportunity to reach out and help someone else. How do you do that? Because you recognize the power of Almighty God. And I want you to understand and hear me with love today, y'all, that God is giving somebody a word to keep you going. The book of Genesis says it this way, behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. It's talking to Moses, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God gives a word of realization to somebody today from the book of Exodus. And he said, my presence will be with you and I will go where you rest. God gives a word of a realization to somebody today. For Deuteronomy says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. The Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you. Noah for it. somebody ought to be shouting right there because you recognize that God brought you to this point and God will take you to your next destination. The good news of the text, y'all, deja vu all over again causes us to recognize, but, but ought not just recognize, but began to realize. But in the recognition, y'all, I want you to also see that God is speaking. On the shore, the Bible says, God begins to speak uh, to the disciples. On the shore, the Bible says, God begins to instruct them. On the shore, God took them right where they were, doing what they were trained to do, and blessed them. Back it up, say it again. Where they were, doing what they wanted to do, God allowed them to be blessed again. God touched them in their current situation. And that is always my prayer, that God will touch you in your current situation, that you will never feel abandoned or left alone, that God will speak a word to you in your current situation, that you will understand how God is able to do exceedingly abundantly and more than you could ever imagine, that God will speak a word, not just to your heart, but speak a word to your soul and bless you to be a blessing to somebody else. So, so important for us to realize and to recognize the power of Almighty God. The disciples recognized Jesus on the shore. That was John's word to Peter. It is the master. Again, that was John's words to Peter. It is the master. How could John be so definitive? How could John be so assured of himself? Believe me, y'all, it was probably tough for even John, but don't forget it was John who was at the cross with the three women when Jesus says, son, behold thy mother, mother, behold thy son. It was John, the Bible says, when Jesus was breaking bread and the one that the beloved one, it was John, the Bible lets it be known that that ran to the tomb, looked in, Peter trailed behind him. You see, when you spend time with God, you are recognized when God speaks. 
Somebody need to give God praise right there because you've been spending more and more time with God. And when you spend time with God, you will hear God's voice in a special way. When you spend time with God, you will respond to God's word like you never responded to. I, I don't mind watching the news and being informed, but I just don't want anybody to get so inundated, so hooked and so connected to CNN and NBC and ABC and all the alphabet uh, networks and, and you don't spend time with the B-I-B-L-E. You need to spend time on your knees during this pandemic. Spend time in the word in this pandemic. Spend time not talking on the phone, but have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will Hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. What you're saying again, Reverend, now you've got to realize, you've got to recognize, and you've got to understand that God is doing exceedingly abundantly and even greater things in your life when you are committed and connected to him. The good news of the text, y'all, is the miracle of the fish comes to us not because Jesus tells the disciples to do something they aren't accustomed to. They are to do what they've been trained to do. Okay, Jesus works a miracle again in the gospel of John, not because the disciples are doing something out of the ordinary, but he works a miracle with the disciples on what they're accustomed to do. Jesus did not merely see a large school of fish from 100 yards away and gave a suggestion. Jesus let the disciples know, I am the creator. I made the sea. I made the fish. I made the water. And if you trust me, I will take you to the place where you're trying to get to. You, you ought to give somebody a high five right there because that's your word that God is taking you to the place that God has created for you. God is taking you to that reservoir that you are so hungry to to receive a great thirst quencher. God is taking you to that mountain to which you can overlook the valleys of your life. God is taking you to that moment, that, that breakthrough where you can stand on God's word and say by the power of almighty God, all things are possible. God has created the fish of your sea and all God is saying, follow me and do what I call you to do. Hear the good news of the text, y'all. Your deja vu moment all over again happens because of your faithfulness and your prayerness, prayerfulness to almighty God. Can I give a shout out today, y'all, to Dr. So Solomon Carla Fuller. Dr. Solomon Carla Fuller, don't know if you know his story, born 1872 and passed in 1953, was the son of enslaved Africans from Liberia. Dr. Carla Fuller, y'all, was one of the pioneering African-American psychiatrists who studied, y'all, the disease of Alzheimer's. Dr. Fuller, y'all, graduated from Brown University School of Medicine, and was a uh, uh, at a hemopathic uh, institution that was opened up to African Americans and women. Brown University in the eight in the 1800 1900s y'all opened up to African Americans and women. And here, this son of an enslaved African became a doctor, but he specialized y'all on the study of. Alzheimer's. It was Dr. Fuller, y'all, and one of his expo and one of his experiments with Alonzo Alzheimer's that developed what Alzheimer's disease was. Okay, Dr. Alonzo Alois Alzheimer's is credited for Alzheimer's disease. 
but it was Dr. Fuller who did the study. Now, you do know how history will record African Americans and their contributions, but this is your little black history fact for today. If it had not been for Dr. Fuller recognizing there is a crisis, but also an opportunity to do research, we would not have the treatments that we have, not to cure, but the treatments for Alzheimer's disease right now. What you saying, Reverend? I'm saying that once you realize and you recognize, you're going to have to reorganize. Reorganize. That's where we are as a church. That's where we are as a body of Christ. That's where we are as believers in the word of almighty God. We have to begin to reorganize. And what does reorganize mean in this day and time? And in a conversation this week with Dr. Ron Monroe, our minister of music, he helped me realize it's, it's not the question of what is church going to look like when we come back together. The real question is what will the mission look like when we open up our mouths? The issue, y'all, is not will what the church look like when the doors open up again. Quit asking that kind of question because some people that we saw on the second Sunday in March, the last time we worship, they will not be here. Heaven forbid. But there are some new folk who are going to come who are watching right now, maybe on another part of the country. There are some new folk who will come who are watching right now who didn't know where C.N. Jenkins was. There are some new folk who will come who are going to be re-energized to get their faith pumped up again. There are some new, quit asking the question, what's it going to look like when we open again and ask the question, how can we speak to the folk on the other side of the camera who have a burning sensation to follow the Lord? Ask the question, how can we minister to folk who are experienced brokenness right now? You got to reorganize yourself. And as you reorganize yourself, you will recognize God will do what God wants to do right where God is is doing it. I, okay, okay. I've been speaking too fast because I think you missed the major shout of this sermon. The major shout of the sermon, y'all, happens when Jesus simply says, cast your net on the other side of the boat. The major shout, y'all, was that Jesus told the disciples, I know you are experienced in fishing, and I know you have a passion to fish, but unless you're following my instructions, you will never do what God has called you to do. You got to cast your net on the other, stay in the same boat, stay in the same sea, stay in the same community, stay in the same environment, stay with the same clothes, stay with the same commitment, but simply cast your net on the other side and I will show you a great multitude of blessings. Y'all, that's a shout right there because God is calling us as a community of faith. Don't run in the pandemic. Just gird your loins and stay right where you are and do thus save the Lord and I will give you a multitude. I like it. The Bible says 153. Why? 153. Don't go play that number, but it's 153 and 153 simply means that that is a particular count on that day. But I believe God is calling 153,000, 153 million, 153 trillion. I don't know what it is. Put some zeros behind it. But God is calling whosoever will to God's heavenly Throne. Now, if you didn't get a shout right there, go back to the text because this was a Holy Ghost fish fry, y'all. A Holy Ghost fish fry. All the disciples did was fish and catch fish. Jesus showed up with some buttermilk biscuits and cornbread at the fish fry. That ain't on the paper, but I just felt like saying that. Jesus showed up, y'all. The Bible says he's got fish charbroil, charbroiling on the grill. He's got bread. Where did the bread come from? We don't know anything about a bakery. We don't know anything about a wheat field. We don't know anything about this miracle. But the Bible says that because they were faithful over a few things, casting their net on the other side, God provided them what they were doing, but also gave them some more. 
And I want you to hear this word today because deja vu all over again as I just believe in my heart that God will speak to somebody on this day all over again and remind you I didn't bring you this far to leave you. God will speak to somebody this day and remind you that I brought you thus far by faith. God will speak to you this day and remind you that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? God will remind you on this day that by my word, you are healed. By my word, you are delivered. By my word, you are lifted up. By my word, you gain hope. By my word, you are free from your addiction. By my word, you are clean and sober. By my word, you are free from abuse. By my word, you are set free. Jesus says I come to preach liberty and salvation to all and y'all don't ever forget if he did it before he has shown up do it again if he's healed you before he has the power to do it again if he's brought you out of darkness before he has the strength to do it again God has all power in his hand and because of that I need God to survive. I'm not worried. I'm not fretting. I'm not giving up. I know there's a cure on the other side of the pandemic, but right now I need God to survive. Right now I need God to speak. Right now I need to humble myself, lift my hands in the hair, and give God praise for being God all by God's self. Why? Because he'll do it all over and 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 over again. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives preaching power. We thank you, God that you speak into our hearts and remind us, just do the simple things. Just hear my voice. Just spend time with God. We thank you for the Johns in our lives that remind us is you working things out. God, we thank you for the disciples in our lives that go along with us when we take these journeys. And God, we thank you for the Peters in our lives who are going to lead us and suggest that we get up off of the shore and get out to doing the work of fishing for women and men. And God, we pray on this day that you will indeed make your word so crank, plain and crystal clear that somebody will hear your invitation. Somebody, God, will humble their hearts and humble their spirits and God they will seek your face today God we know that someone may feel a little distant from you and so God may you cast the net and bring them closer God another somebody may have gone back to doing what they were doing before and God remind them they will not be successful unless your hand is upon them and so God does give them strength right where they are. God, another somebody is going through a terrible storm in life right now. And I pray that as you have the way of wiping the clouds away and letting the sun shine, the S-U-N, may your S-O-N shine on the hearts of all of those who ache this Sunday morning. And Lord God, as this service may be seen and watched over and over again, may new illumination and new hope and new joy and new love fall fresh on all of those who watch and hear your word proclaim god we love you we worship you we honor you we magnify your name and we thank you god for being there for us in our moments when we need to survive in the name of the father son and the holy ghost we pray and all the God's children say together, amen. My friends, we thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this service. 
do know that the invitation is extended to you for you to be a part of a church family. This day and time, we call it a virtual church family. But if you're desirous of a church home, I implore you to again, call the church, email me, write us, let us know who you are, and we will connect with you. We will put you together with somebody virtually who can help you become a great disciple. I got to quote my, my dear friend, Miss Willie Mae Smith, our oldest member of the church, celebrated her 99th birthday this year. And she told me on the first Sunday in June when I preached here in 1992, she said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon any day. And so I want to see the sermons of your life this week. I want to see God come alive. I, I want to want to hear you on the prayer call in the mornings talking about how God is working things out. I, I want to hear about you joining in on the Zoom Bible studies and how you're being a part of small groups. I, I want to know that God is working. I want to see a sermon before I hear your sermon. Trust me when I see it, not just with my physical eyes, I can see it with my spirit. I know God is doing it over and over and over again. It's been a joy to be in worship with you today. We praise God for you. On behalf of Pastor Lanson and all the offices of members of the church, we're grateful that you joined C. N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church. Please be in tune with us. Go to our website, www.cnjenkins.org. Uh, go to our Facebook page, go to Instagram, YouTube, all those mechanisms that you use. Just go to them, check us out. Tell somebody else about the love of Almighty God. Share this video. We'd love for you to be our disciple, our virtual disciple. Again, I love you. God loves you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. We'll see you next week.